The Ado State Governor, Godwin Obasiki, says he regrets not joining the People's Democratic Party long before he did, as he has come to realize that the party stands for the values he cherishes. And in the same party, River State Governor Yesom Wike has expressed his wish for all South South states to be under the main opposition People's Democratic Party. With the ruling party APC experiencing some internal wranglings, is PDP on its way to achieving this? Joining us to discuss this is Fermi Lawson and Kenneth Wake, both public affairs analysts. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we'll start with you, uh, Dr. Wake. Both Governor Obasaki and Governor Wike there seemed to be a lot of love for the PDP. Let's start with Obasaki saying he regretted not joining the PDP sooner. What's your reaction to that? Well, for me, um, it shows you clearly that um, um, a, a political class uh, goes into politics uh, without uh, much ado about uh, political ideology. And so um, if... Um, he was just given opportunity a week ago or so, and uh, he had wished that uh, he was in PDP earlier. Then it meant that um, uh, where he was, uh, it was just mainly for the purposes of capturing power. And so it shows clearly um, that uh, the political class in Nigeria is only interested in capturing power and not uh, because he shares certain common ideologies and then common um, program of action uh, and, and then uh, with a view to delivering on uh, the social contract that is, uh, uh, their, uh, their parties enter with the people. And so that, that is what it shows clearly. And so for me, when somebody says he had wished that he was uh, on the other side, so what, what is it that he has found in, in that party today that he didn't see yesterday in the other party. Uh, the reason can be best explained uh, 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 by the fact that uh, he was uh, actually denied an opportunity for a second term. And so, um, yes, uh, the, the, the major uh, uh, um, aim of a political party is to capture power. But when you are a political party, a political party, you share some common, you know, ideas, you know, uh, together, oh. share, share some common uh, aspirations and then with a view to, you know, capture power. But what we have right. today is... Let, uh, let, let's bring uh, uh, Mr. Lawson into the conversation and get his uh, two cents on the matter as well. There are some concerns about the governor's statement uh, about realizing that the PDP stood for the values he cherished and lived for. Uh, to quote some of his uh, statement, values of justice, values of law and order, values of care for the people, uh, putting people first and the likes. Now, pundits say that this is a little too sugary for a party most people hold varying views about. What do you say? Well, I think fundamentally, with, uh, my opinion may not be a little, may so much different from the opinion of Dr. Ken, especially when you look at the principles and the ideological representation of both major political parties of PDP and APC Nigeria. Today, when you look at the political party called APC Nigeria today, not less than 70% of the operatives were at one time or the other members of, of the PDP. So it has become you know, the norm for Nigerian politicians to, you know, to speak well in whatever platform they find themselves as far as politics is concerned. It is very unfortunate that politics is no longer driven by ideology. Politics is no longer driven by manifestos. As we speak today, if you look at ask the PDP and the APC. I'm not sure you can get any clear cut difference as far as the manifestos of both parties are concerned today. They, they, are, they are like the same as twin. Ideologically, they have resemblance. And when you look at their programs and policies, they are similar to each other. So I think maybe uh, Governor Baseki uh, is only speaking from the point of convenience that you know, he has found in the PDP as of today. But I think ideologically, there has been no clear cut difference in the operation of both political, those both major political parties that have governed Nigeria since 1999. 
All right, let's uh, go to Dr. Wiki. He brought in the God factor when he said you will never know what God has destined for you. Uh, and he says in the hours of tri tribulation, uh, they were pushed out into the rain and the storm from another political party. It's just around that issue. Uh, the PDP became the Messiah. What's your take on the God factor conversation in politics general generally? Um, yeah, but what factor in Nigerian politics uh, don't make any significant uh, impact as well as I'm concerned? Because we, uh, uh, you bring God factor, you know, when uh, you feel uh, uh, marginalized in your party. But when you are in power and when you are utilizing the, uh, all, all the uh, technical sides of power and all that, you know, to uh, oppress, suppress people, you won't remember that there is God. And all that. Uh, for me, there is no God in this matter. The, the, the God that is in, in the matter is in, in amongst uh, the political class. You know, it is in them. You know, when once they find themselves in the corridors of power, they forget that you know uh, they go from one place to place, or they, they went from one place to place uh, to campaign to assure the people that if elected, that they will keep to whatever promises that uh, they made to them. And so when they find themselves in the corridors of power, they, so, they soon forget that uh, they also ruled uh, through uh, the sovereignty of the people to get to where they are. And so another four years, they begin to give them another hope. If you vote us for second tenure, we will do this. And so it's, um, uh, uh, the God factor here is a matter of when, I mean, themselves seeing uh, themselves in the corridors of power and overload, uh, I mean, loading it on the people all the time. Okay, not keeping to promises. That is the God factor for me, you know, because they make themselves God and all that, and not the God factor that uh, Basibu is bringing. For me, yes, I understand the circumstances, and uh, I, I was one of those who also said that, look, look uh, because of the political system that we have in Nigeria, you should seek another opportunity because the God father, uh, father factor came in. But uh, there is no need bringing God here, you know, uh, himself. If you also give him <laughs> He will also do what uh, uh, did to him, to another person. They are all the same set of people. The Nigerians realize that the power that these ones, you know, uh, put over, exercise over them, that is the same power that they freely, you know, give to, the, to them to exercise this. And then uh, de determine whether or not to give to anyone that they so wish. Then, you know, to take Nigerians for a ride and bring them back up. There's no God, God factor inside this matter, as far as I'm concerned. All right, let's go back to uh, Mr. Lawson with the same uh, question. What is your take on the God factor conversation when it comes to Nigerian politics? Well, it has always been one key, you know, tool used by the Nigerian political class, especially when it comes to, you know, seeking the mandate of the people. But when it is about delivering on the... Mm, mandate when it's about delivering on the dividends of democracy, when it's about delivering on the electoral promises, the God factor is often not you know brought into play. It is even or mostly you know the people that are the mercy of either the Godfather or the Godsons who have been fortunate to occupy political position. So I think uh, the God factor is something that is less important in the real sense when it comes to the conduct of political office holders in Nigeria, when it comes to the conduct of you know, people who have occupied their position in the past, people even at the point of you know inauguration are sworn into office using the Holy Bible or the Holy Quran, but the, the moment you know they get into positions, they neglect this oath taken by these holy books and begin to act as gods themselves. So that factor is usually you know something you know that is usually brought for when the elections are taken, when you know the, the politicians want to seek the fresh mandate from the people. All right, uh, Mr. Wake, let me come back to you. Um, according uh, to the governor, his decision to join the PDP was a product of wild consultation with the Ado people. He assured the party leaders, I'm talking about the PDP now, of massive votes and victory uh, come September. While he certainly has followership and the power of incumbency, some argue 
He is in for a run with the APC uh, candidate, uh, Ize Yamu, uh, who also has some following. What do you say? Yeah, for me, uh, if you say uh, before he actually joined uh, the PDP that he must have uh, consulted with the two people, I think uh, it, may be, it may not be uh, uh, true. The truth is that, yes, he was uh, um, the leader of his party, and when he was uh, uh, when he lost uh, favor from the so-called father that he also enjoyed um, his uh, support yesterday and all that, so he, he needed to uh, find uh, soccer in the new uh, uh, political party that he finds uh, himself today. I don't think that uh, he may have uh, uh, carried out a long, I mean, a wider consultation of uh, Edo people apart from. Uh, uh, members of, uh, I mean, his full uh, true followership, uh, you know, so to say. And uh, it may not have been a wider consultation, so to say, to, to have uh, given him the backing to say, we will support you and all that. But I think that uh, whether anybody likes it or not, like you said, that he has the I mean, power of incumbency, yes, he's there. He, he enjoys uh, some uh, level of uh, followership because uh, he is cutting the shot now uh, uh, and all that. And so, uh, having been in APC, there is a uh, also, the likelihood that he, he would have uh, commanded more than 60 to 70 percent of followership in APC, and then coupled with uh, the followership in PDP, where um, all of them put together, we are also looking up to those who can actually fund the election like he can fund. The other ones may want to fund elections, but they will have double mind in terms of followership. But with Obasiki coming in now, there is a tendency that he, he may command uh, 60 percent of uh, APC followership in addition to what is existing or what was existing in PDP. And so he could easily cruise to victory when you look at that. And so riding on that, he may want to say that he consulted widely with the two people. But uh, given the circumstances he found himself, he has uh, more likely opportunities to cruise to victory than any other person, you know, um, like uh, Eze Yamo and all that. And because whether anybody likes it or not, the fresh blood in APC is still within him. And then the new blood of uh, PDP is also within him. And so when you combine these forces together and the blood together, uh, it's, it's close to uh, cruising to victory uh, in, in the circumstances he finds himself. So it's not as if he's a superhuman being, a super politician now, but because uh, uh, they do people and the outside they do, uh, you know, he has uh, some level of uh, um, uh, sympathy and all that. And so that sympathy, and then given the fact that he has also you know, made some giant strides in, in terms of uh, delivering on his campaign promises and all that. All of those will play out uh, likely for him, uh, judging from where we are today. Uh, Mr. Lawson, let's talk about the River State Governor, yes, on Wike, and his desire for all the South-South states to be under one party, preferably the PDP. In a democracy, is this a fair sentiment? Hey, well, you see, uh, it has become the norm in Nigeria. While uh, Governor Uke is aspiring to have, you know, all the states in the South South region under the control of his party, PDP, you will also realize that it is the aspiration of the government at the central to have all the states in the control in the country under the control of uh, the governing party APC. It has always been the selfish desire of an average Nigerian politician, and that is why today in the states across the Confederation, you find the ruling parties controlling controlling virtually all the seats in the House of Assembly, all the, all the, all the seats in the, at the local government level. So it is this you know, aspiration of the average Nigerian political class, especially when politics is not actually owned by the people. Because in Nigeria, the politics is owned and majorly dictated by the, by the ruling elite. And it has virtually taken you know, the power of control away from the people and not to the people at every given state. state local government or even the federation and like have the power or decided on their own to begin to determine who governs them at one point or the other and what party governs them at one point or the other we'll continue to have aspirations like that of uh, mr wiki who wants the entire south south because the question we must begin to ask is not just about the political uh, the one political party governing an entire region we've had it in the southwest when all the political party uh, when one party was in control of all the states. And, but what has been the benefit of this to the people? 
Do they have a common manifesto as the states of the South South? If the entire state of the South South are under the same political party, do they, do they have a common programs of education? Do they have a common economic development program? You know, despite being all all producing you know, states, these are the real issues, not just you know having the logo of the umbrella at their various government houses. All it right, has that... to do with you know having the common agenda to, that can that directly affect the people. All right, uh, let's go back to um, uh, Dr. Nweke. Uh, the Rivers governor dismissed speculations that he was aiming at the presidency in 2023, but said that he would support the transportation minister, Rotimia Mechi, that's his predecessor, for the presidency, should he clinch the PDP ticket. Do you think that is a pursuit Mechi is considering? If yes, what are his chances? I don't know if the... Uh, the, I don't know whether uh, um, the former governor of River State, uh, Rotimi Amechi, has uh, a presidential ambition. That I do not know, and I have not heard him you know, say that in, in the public and all that. And so, um, of course, the governor of River State, the present one, also um, has his uh, right to say he would want to support uh, uh, Mr. Rotimi Amechi if he actually runs... Uh, under his own, uh, under PDP and all that. And I do not also know uh, whether uh, uh, Mr. Mechi would want to run that any other party if he chooses to run for presidency in 2023, other than the APC that uh, uh, some of us know him to be. And so uh, for me, um, the governor of River State uh, may be also right in his own thinking that uh, he would support him if he actually runs in, in his own party. After all, um, as a politician, he, they will also want uh, to uh, win elections and all that. And so, again, whoever that emerges finally as a flag bearer of their party, you know, they will always want to support. I, I also think that he's also right in his own thinking in that regard. All right, uh, Mr. Lawson, let's take some of the uh, time for this uh, part of the program to look at the situation at the APC. The caretaker committee... Um, that was constituted on Thursday, met for the first time today. And one of the things that happened was uh, Gaidam, Victor Gaidam, handing over uh, to them. Uh, what is your take on the makeup of the team that is going to uh, chart a new part for the APC? Well, the, the team, headed by Don Mabuni of Yogi State, to the best of my knowledge, is experienced, remember, Governor Iguni himself was national secretary of the APC before becoming the governor of Yobe. His experience in party, political party management is an administrator, you know, supported by you know, the team of other members, you know, Senator Dode and uh, you know, the governor and some other persons who I think are competent enough. But what I think should be the ultimate focus of that uh, caretaker committee should not just be about organizing a convention for the party. Because today, the party is not only divided at the top. The party is divided across the state. And I think it is important that the committee take advantage of the time it has, you know, to ensure that it embarks on, you know, adequate reconciliation across the state and across the zones of the party that are also bedeviled by the crisis of the you know, factionalization. So I think the focus of the committee was the burden beyond just organizing a national convention for the APC. But as far as competency is concerned, they are capable hands, to the best of my knowledge, Dr. Guni is experienced in party management, and I think the committee can do a good job in positioning the APC. All right, uh, Mr. Weke, uh, your thoughts quickly as well on the uh, situation with Tinubu and Buhari. The presidency, on the one hand, uh, issues a statement that there is no rift between uh, the parties. And then um, Ashiwaju also issues a statement um, for the first time on the APC crisis. There are those who are sad that the Ashiwaju's um, statement was a reaffirmation of his authority in the party. And there are some who say uh, there is something fishy, all is not well. Where do you stand in this conversation? Well, where I stand and where, what I see from where I am sitting is that uh, um, the leader of APC uh, in Nigeria is the president uh, of uh, Nigeria, uh, uh, Muhammadu Buhari. 
And um, well, uh, at the formation of the APC, uh, don't forget that APC was uh, a marriage of uh, many political parties, you know, that uh, they came together. And so at the time, probably they saw uh, Bola Tinubu as the national leader. And so he's been addressed as national leader of APC. But remember that the NEC was convened by uh, Mr. President and uh, in the State House. And uh, whether it was a riot act and all that, that was uh, carried out by the supposedly leader of the uh, uh, party. And so not the, uh, the, the one that uh, people know as the national leader, that is uh, Bola Tinubu. And so ordinarily, people want to uh, speculate, you know, because uh, it, it appears that uh, Mr. President was sleeping all this while. He turned blind eyes while his followers were running from pillar to post, you know. And so I think that uh, he rose up uh, at, the, uh, at a, a very late hour, so to say, you know, to um, uh, take very decisive action of, I mean, conveying the fact that he is the national leader of the APC instead of uh, Bola Tinibu that is being uh, banded around. And I think that uh, having taken such a decision, whether anybody likes it or not, um, uh, Bola Tinibu, uh, from his actions, supported uh, the likes of uh, Adam Tosumile being the chairman. And so having uh, 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 dissolved that National Working Committee, there is no way anybody who sits in the comfort of his would not allege that uh, there will be a rift between the, uh, the supposedly uh, leader of the party and the uh, national leader, so to say, of right. the party, being Bolatinibu. But all those are speculations. But I think that whether they have come out clearly to say they don't have any issues, but beyond uh, the, the, what the physical eyes can see, uh, uh, nobody will want to accept, especially from the camp of uh, uh, Tinibu, that uh, he has lost out uh, in the power beat. But so whether anybody likes it or not, you cannot also throw away the factor in APC. And so all, right. all those put together um, are mere conjectures and not uh, maybe probably the realities on ground. Uh, I guess that's where we'll wrap things up uh, for this segment of the program. We're grateful that the network allowed us to uh, have a clear conversation with you. Uh, Dr. Ken Nweke, thank you very much for your contributions on the program. And of course, um, uh, Mr. Femi Lawson, thank you very much for your contributions as well. All right, we'll go on a short break for a plots report. And when we come back, I will give you my take. Don't go away. The immediate past governor of Oyo State, Abiola Ajumobi, has been buried at his Oluyole residence amid tight security. Governor Abdullahi Ganduje of Kano State, Governor Abubakar Badaru of Jigawa State, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Femi Hamzat, and other prominent personalities gathered at the Abiola Ajumobi Central Mosque in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital, to offer special prayer for the soul of the past governor. Speaking to newsmen, some of the personalities and followers described his loss as a big blow to the country. A great son of Southwest is gone, an illustrious Ibadan man. This day will come for everybody, so we will all die. So I think the lesson is for us to do well while we are alive. And I think that's just the message. Be good to yourselves and to others. His uh, development stride while he was in office for eight years, it is second to none. We are thankful to Almighty Allah for blessing us with someone like Governor Ajimobi. And the land landmark that he left behind will not be forgotten in a hurry. I never thought this would happen suddenly on our own. We will always remember him as someone that served the state, that served his party, that served this nation. So we will always remember him and uh, we will continue to pray for his soul and we'll continue to associate with the family. The semblance of calm in the All Progressive Congress APC is much welcomed by onlookers who are interested in the Nigerian political space and worried about the intrigues ahead of key elections in the country. The politics of 2023 is already here whether we acknowledge it or not. What it will bet, politicking I mean, is yet to be seen. And as for the cross capitals, a term we use locally to refer to defection like that of the two main gladiators in the Ado election were not obvious to the reasons for the swap of parties. 
It is therefore of some affront, I would say, to our collective intelligence, the use of language that presents a picture of their new abode as a virtuous and upright entity when it is common knowledge that it is untrue. My one thought tonight is a re-echo of the need for a political revert, one that is based on an ideological foundation that is anchored on the fundamental objectives and the directive principles of our state policies as enshrined in Chapter 2 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, that is, the promotion of people-oriented state, economic, political, welfare and social policies anchored on political ideology that will limit political flirtation, jumping from one party to the other. As the campaigning commands in earnest in a Doe state, let politicians please limit the rhetoric to what they intend to do for the people with concrete follow-through action plan that will enable the people, remind them in a year or two for update on implementation. For in the end, that is what politics really should be about. At least I think so. Thank you for watching the program tonight. It returns same time tomorrow. Until then, please be well.